When in doubt, scout. 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 That son of a gun. <laughs> when in doubt, scout has gotten me out of my pickup more than you could understand. Oh, John says that let's go back and scout again and, and make sure that they're making the right decision in the field. When, when, when in doubt, scout means to me is that you're young enough to still haul your butt out to the field. <laughs> I'd like to say I had something to do with hiring the guy, but I didn't all, and I just remember John was one of the, the candidates who gave his dissertation, and he ended up with a job down there at the Ag Station as the extension entomologist. And it was pretty apparent to all of us that within a year, it was apparent that he was going to have a, a big impact on the produce industry. Believe it or not, for you folks in Yuma, it's hard to find folks to come for these jobs that want to go to Yuma. But John did, he was from Arizona. I grew up in an agricultural community uh, up near Buckeye. And um, although my parents weren't involved in, in agriculture, um, I was surrounded by it. And so when I went to high school, and then uh, eventually when I went to college. Did you know he was a rodeo clown before he came down here? Yeah, he was for, for two years. <laughs> he got too tall and he couldn't get in the barrel all the way. I actually came to Yuma for two, a year and a half, attended Arizona Western College, attended the ag classes. Um, T.O. Beach was the teacher back then. And from there, I went up to the University of Idaho, took some more ag classes. And then I finished my bachelor's degree at the University of Arizona in entomology, which is what I always wanted to do. And then from there, I had the opportunity to work on my master's degree. And I came back to Yuma um, for three summers, uh, working here on, at the Yuma Ag Center uh, as towards my master's degree. And then finally I went to um, Oklahoma State to work on my PhD in entomology. And that took four years. And then fortunately, I was able to come right back to Yuma. It'll, the job, the role I have, it allows me to do research in the field here on the experiment station, but it also allows me to go out and, and work with the growers and the PCAs, and in particular the PCAs. He can put things in practical terms where idiots like us can understand it. <laughs> can't, can't put it to real, wor uh, real world use. One thing that impresses me, sometimes I'll get into a debacle or an insect problem and having a hard time dealing with it, tell John about it or ask him what, you know, what's working. And it's funny, he'll go, well, you know, so-and-so called me with the same problem. And you know, it kind of helps out that there's somebody out there that's uh, understanding and you know, that talks to a lot of us all the time. John's a good scientist, but he also is very practical and he does good work in the science level, but he always drives it towards the practical problem. And he knows how to communicate with a full range of people. He can deal with academics comfortably. He can deal with people in the field at all levels and all phases of the industry. He adds, he adds quite a bit of professionalism to my job. Uh, just being readily available to, it seems like to everyone, he's that way. He makes our lives as bug men so much easier. What I respect most about John is the quality of his information. He, he's as well respected by research scientists as he is laborers out in the field. In, in my opinion, John Palumbo is the most uh, influential and respected vegetable entomologist in, in the country. What I respect most about John is his uh, work ethic and his honesty. He brings to us exactly what, what we need. We need honest opinions, results. Uh, you know, I go to places for work across the country and uh, I tell them I'm from Yuma, I work in Yuma, and one of the first things they always tell me is, you get to work with John Palumbo? He's the best, he, he really is, and anybody will tell you that in the answer. He's the best I've ever seen or any of us have, and uh, the best there is, the best there probably ever will be. Um, that's, that's a nice thing for people to say, I'm very humbled by that, but the bo bottom line is there's a lot of good entomologists across this country, and I'm one of them. I, I consider myself one of the top entomologists in the country, but I wouldn't say I'm the best. Um, there's some really good people out there, and I'm just lucky to be, um, be able to work with them and, and know them and interact with them. You know, I've only been a part of this thing for a little bit now, but um, just learning about the history of all the things he's done in his career is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, you look at the white fly outbreak and the grotto bug, uh, 
Diamondback Moth, you know, it, the list goes on and on. He's just been an invaluable tool to us. Oh, and we're pretty lucky to have a guy like John to lean on for uh, just information, uh, uh, chemical strategies, uh, thresholds when we should be spraying. We're kind of, we're kind of spoiled. He understands the system. He understands it's not just managing a system like this for insect pest control, but it's everything that goes together. It's the, the varieties, the genetics that go in, the diseases, the planting dates, and the agronomic characteristics that these plants carry. The nationally and internationally is very respected with, on, on his area as a scientist, as, as a researcher. His reputation is, is, uh, is, is great. What John has brought to the industry is a security and in, our, in our food supply, in, in this case, our vegetable food supply. You never know what the next pest is gonna be. You don't know what the next outbreak is gonna be. I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for them. That's, that's, that's what I do in Yuma. That's what I roll with the University of Arizona is to support agriculture and support the ag community. And without those guys, I wouldn't be relevant. This experiment station that we work on wouldn't be relevant if it wasn't for the ag community. And, and I could just give you list after list of growers and companies uh, that have just been so generous to us. And so in many respects, their acceptance of what we do means everything because without them, we're not relevant. If you spend three minutes with him, he'll probably be laughing. He doesn't mean to make you laugh, but he brings out this Palo Verde draw or something. It's just kind of, kind of a little hick sound or something. He'll make you laugh. We were at a meeting and he came up to me and he introduced himself. He says, I really, I'm really thankful that, that you came to town. I said, why is that, John? He says, because people stopped confusing me with Davy Brooks and started confusing me with you. And that was, uh, that was, that was a plus in his mind. Then I don't want to get photoshopped or photobombed for the rest of every one of his, uh, his uh, presentations. John and I mess with each other a lot. I, I, I've followed John on a lot of programs, and and I'm accustomed to seeing my my face photoshopped onto pictures of Hulk Hogan. And I think a sense of humor is part of it. Um, we talked earlier about my my good friends Bill and Dan Fox and those clowns, and and, and but there a lot of those PCAs are the same way. They're, when it's time to be serious, everybody's serious and get the job done. But I think people, and I, I include myself in this, we're so down to earth that, you know, there's more to life than just walking fields all day or doing research all day. And that's what, one of the things I've enjoyed most here. And, and again, I wouldn't fit in another, uh, I wouldn't fit in a large city or a campus-based uh, department because, you know, it's just not who I am. And I think that's what I like about Yuma is that most of the people I work with are a lot think the same way I do and, and like the same things. And so hunting, fishing, go down to sports, um, and a good sense of humor. I, I, ju I just want to say John's a great friend. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm proud to have the opportunity to talk about him. John is a man with character, strength in what he does, and he's second to none. He uh, encouraged me to better myself. He told me, go to school, continue going to school. And he, uh, he said, will help you and he supported me and, and, and he gave me his advice and I finished my master's degree because he kind of pushed me to do it. If I was going to say one more thing I'd probably say John on, on, not just on me but I think on behalf of our industry I gotta say thank you for a job well done. Well we've said some nice things here about John but I think as I would end up my comments it would simply to say John's been a good scientist, he's been a good educator, he's a good colleague and he's a good friend. And I always appreciate the way John has in his heart, he's driven by, he's motivated by the right things. And that is to use good science to solve practical problems and actually help people in the field. He has an altruistic attitude, and I appreciate that. And I enjoy, I enjoy working around people like John. Like I said, if I could, I'd hire Jim Moore just like him. He can tell me where they are, we'll go find them. Is that good? Okay, good, good. When in doubt, get out. <laughs> John Wayne. I don't want John to know that I've said anything nice about him, so let's keep this to ourselves. 
John is probably uh, in the top uh, 10 PCAs in this town right now, being a golfer. No. <laughs> <laughs>